Okay, here's, here's how it works in this particular situation. Well, it's my understanding, and <clears throat> I might have a, a fact wrong in this particular instance, but it's my understanding that the movie theater, when it was originally constructed, at that time, it did not require a conditional use permit in the, the zone in place at that time. <clears throat> because it was not uncommon to have movie theaters built in that era in the manner that we have today. And it operated uh, along those lines for many years. And I think we acknowledge that during those times, as was pointed out by several speakers, during those historical times, there were from time to time uh, a live uh, event, uh, but it is clear that the primary use for many, many years, historically, was that building was used as a movie house. And it's obvious that that's the case because it does not have a full stage. It simply has a platform. Had it been intended to be used uh, for live performances on a regular basis, it would have been originally built with a full stage. That's not the case. But as was common at the time, as many of us know, who have been around a little while, uh, in those days, along with movie performances, there would be raffles, uh, magic shows, uh, other entertainment, uh, along with the main feature. And I suppose over those years there might have been independent activities, uh, perhaps permitted by the city and perhaps not. That brings us forward to uh, right prior to Mr. Dillon's acquisition of the property. The prior owner uh, had worked very closely with the city to ensure that, in particular, the showing of movies <coughs> in this theater, that that would, uh, that the non because by that point, by, by, by the 2000s, it became a requirement in all zoning districts where theaters were permitted, movie theaters were permitted, that it now required a conditional use permit. So when that occurred, this movie theater became non-conforming because it did not have a conditional use permit. It was prior, it was pre-existing, if you will. So Mr. Um, Martin, the prior owner, of the building worked very closely with our staff to ensure that he maintained the non-conforming status of the building as a movie theater. And he would show films uh, in that building to maintain, not always successfully, but uh, maintain that non-conformity. Mr. Dillon and his family purchased the building and applied for a conditional use permit not, in, not to operate it as a movie theater, because he did not need to, to, get, to get that conditional use permit. It was to operate the uh, computer repair business, which was, of course, granted. And as part of that approval, it was memorialized in the conditions of approval that it can continue, the theater portion of the building can continue to be used as a movie theater in a, I think, very encouraging manner by uh, basically uh, requiring that films continue to be shown there. And Mr. Dillman at the time had indicated his desire to do so. So that was put in the approval. It is also very clear in the conditions of approval in 2009 uh, because at the time we thought it was important, and the BZA at the time agreed, that it should be very clear that live entertainment not be permitted. And that is, as far as staff is concerned, very clearly outlined in the conditions of approval in 2009. Since that time, of course, uh, Mr. Dillman approached the city wanting to relieve the property from some of those very clear conditions, and that's why we are here before you today. Hopefully that helps answer the question. 
Thank you for making that clear. 